How's it going? This is another Elden Ring video. At this point in time, I refreshed my first playthrough and I'm pretty deep in my second one, so I figure right now is a great time to review the game and give my thoughts, so that's what I'll be doing. So the first topic I have for you is the environments, and there are quite a few of them too. There are numerous environments in this game, ranging from snowy mountaintops all the way to murky swamps, underground cities, forests, castles. So many different places, all of them unique, and have their own special themes and enemies in them. Elden Ring is a very large game that makes great use of its space. Not once I go to an area and ask, haven't I already been here before? It was always a new area with new things to find, new things to see that made them different and special. This game constantly gives you beautiful areas to explore and to find new things. In every cave, every cat comes, there's always some items you can find, whether it's weapons, ashes, consumables, upgrades, something you can actually use and actually find beneficial to your playthrough. I have no doubt in my mind that Elden Ring is one of the greatest open world environments to date. There are so many positives, and I can really think of any negatives with all of this regard. However, like previous games, the environments aren't the biggest spectacle that draws you in. As always, the biggest spectacle are the bosses in the game. And there are quite a few of them too in this one. One thing I wondered before playing this game was if the bosses will be as good as previous games. And thankfully after playing, I can say the answer to that question is yes. The bosses are very great, they're very fun, and overall, very different. What makes the mainline bosses so great and fun is that they're all very unique. They all have their own fighting styles ranging from hand to hand, sword and shield, claws, spear, trident. So many different weapons and ways they fight that they never feel like clones of each other and they're all very unique and differentiated. And of course, there are some side bosses that are repeated throughout the game and much less unique, but those are required for a game like this because you can't just have hundreds of unique bosses without having some overlap and ability and stuff like that, so that's acceptable in my opinion. When it comes to the mainline bosses, there are some extremely hard ones. Thankfully, I had a pretty easy time with most of them, but one in particular did give me a lot of trouble, and I'll talk about that one later. Which now brings us to overall game difficulty and navigation through it. In Elden Ring, the difficulty mainly depends on what your build is and also what you're doing at the time. Certain bosses are harder than the other ones especially towards the end. In my first playthrough, I used a Faith, Dex, and Bleed build, where most points were in Dex, but I used Bleed to help my damage overall because my Claw weapon was very weak, but I liked the way the weapon felt, so I used it anyway. Doing this made a lot of bosses way harder than they should have been, because I was doing small bits of damage here and there, but I found it fun. I also did it under level 2 for most of the bosses, so... For my first playthrough, in my experience, most bosses can be between 4 to 10 tries, which is pretty low overall, so... I didn't do too bad. The only boss that took me more tries than that, really, is Moog and Melania, because those two are very hard, and... I was under level for both of those, so that definitely didn't help. Moog took me about 20, I believe, and Melania took me even more than that. During my second playthrough, I used a Strength, Faith, Colossal Sword build, and that went way easier. And the reason for that is because you can stagger enemies way more with the Colossal Sword, so. They helped a lot of difficulty. 
to the point where I didn't need to dodge as much and I could just muscle through some of the blows and just hit anyway. And you can't do that with the Bleed Faith build because it's more fast and agile, so you can actually learn the boss patterns for that kind of playthrough. So keep that in mind when you're actually going through certain builds. I have yet to use a magic build, but from what I've heard, those are much, much easier, so I'll be using that in the next one to see if it's any good. But from what I've seen, it's pretty strong. By the time I got to the last boss on my first playthrough, I was so good at dodging and timing my attacks that I almost beat the second and last boss my very first try, and I got it in under 10 tries, which was very major for a Souls game. And this really highlights that the game teaches you a great job of what to do and what not to do. A great example of this is on Margaret, the very first main boss. You have him doing very, very delayed attacks, so it punishes you if you panic roll or roll even slightly early. So you learn very early on to wait until you actually see the enemy swing before you dodge. So you do learn as you go if you pay attention. So overall... The difficulty is self-managed. You can make it hard if you want to, make it easier if you want to. It's really just your choice, which is a decent way to go about it, honestly. So, in my opinion, the difficulty is done quite well. Now that I've spoken about bosses and difficulty, I feel it's a good time to talk about combat now. So, the combat in Elden Ring is shown to have a lot of aspects from other FromSoft games as well, such as Sekiro, Dark Souls games, obviously, and even Bloodborne, too. It seemed like they took some of the more light pieces of the combat to flesh it out a little bit more, and also adding in jumping as well, which was well liked in Sekiro, too. They also used posture from Sekiro, Hunter's tools from Bloodborne, the combat basics and essentials from Dark Souls, such as pairing everything of that nature, which is good for a Souls fan like me, so I have a lot of stuff to actually enjoy in this game. In this game too, the hitboxes have certainly improved in past games, allowing you to pull some crazy dodges. I have one in one of my videos of me fighting Morgat where he dodged my attack quite well, and I couldn't even be mad about missing that hit because the hitbox completely dodged my attack, so... That was a good improvement. You can also pull some crazy dodges too using weapon arts, which is very nice, such as the Blood Fang Sword. I know from my experience because I dodged quite a few attacks this way. They also added quite a bit of spells in this game. There are more than any other previous game from From Software. So, quite a bit of spells in both magic and incantations. I also used them quite a bit in my first playthrough on my Faith Dex run. I used lots of fire incantations, black flames, some crucible here and there, healing spells. They all worked quite well and benefit the playthrough. Another good addition is allowing you to swap the weapon arts and your weapons. So you can make claws into fire claws. Katana into a flame katana, a cult katana, ice katana. So many different ways to apply your ashes of war and make boring weapons into special weapons that can really help you out a lot. I use my hoarfrost stomp on my claws, which work quite well. I also use flame ones on my claws as well, and also a flame art katana for the final boss. Overall, I like the combat quite a bit. I don't like it as much as I did in Bloodborne, but it's very close to that game for me, personally. I think the combat is probably a 9 overall, so very, very good. Another improvement you see in this game over past games is that the story is much more prevalent and in your face. You have NPCs talk to you about the story, tell you about different characters, and you actually come across these characters, and the story actually develops as you go along, so... You're seeing these different demigods, you're defeating them, you're seeing their followers, you're defeating them. 
you're seeing different ideologies that different characters have in the game that want you to do different things when you become Elden Lord. So you're experiencing all these things, doing all these side quests, and learning more about the story, more about the characters, and also changing the ending if you so please. Personally, I did the Ronnie route, and I actually liked that ending quite a bit. And I liked her quest too, so that was pretty fun for me overall. You also have interesting characters too with great side quests such as Ronnie obviously, Selen, Celevis, Blyde, Alexander the Pot, numerous characters with great stories. So this game is actually pretty good overall. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And I give the story about, I think I'll give it a 10. It's, it lets you see what you're interested in, it lets you develop the story how you want to, and also has a good pace to it as well. It doesn't feel too long or too short. Now then, as much as I love this game, it will be dishonest to not mention the issues I had with it as well, so I'll be touching on that now. With some platforms, you have certain issues that you don't have with other ones. Personally, I played on PC, so I will touch on those issues that I had and that I heard of. The first issue that I had was with an unusual amount of delay in my rolls. I alleviated this issue by going to my settings and changing it from full screen to windowed mode. I'm not sure why that alleviated it, but it did for some reason, so that was good. That helped to someone, but still left a bit of input lag, so it was slightly disappointing that I still had it there, but it was manageable. I ended up having to do this thing where I would roll slightly early, which is kind of awkward. And some bosses would take me like one or two more tries than they should have if I had the better way to time it, but it wasn't a big issue overall. I also had a weird crash on the fire giant, which made me redo the fight multiple times. Eventually I figured out the issue that I had was sitting on the horse, so if I was on the horse when the cutscene started, it would crash my game, and I had to redo the whole thing, so that wasted like 4 or 5 tries, which made the boss take like 10 tries instead of just a few, so that was a little annoying to be honest, but it didn't ruin the playthrough for me. I also get these weird FPS dips sometimes, which is unexplained because I have hardware that is more than enough to run this game, so that's a bit of a poor issue I guess, but it's nothing major, it just affects some open world fights occasionally. And the final topic I have for you is the music. As always with From Software Games, the music is absolutely great. In every single environment you have some music to match the vibe of the area. And you also have great music for the boss fights. It always sounds very impactful and matches what the boss's theme is, what their personality is like, their abilities. It always sounds reminiscent of what you would expect to hear when you see them. So it knocked it out of the park there. Once again, 10 out of 10. I have no issue with the music at all. Now, to give my overall review of the game, I want to give it a 9 out of 10. It's without a doubt my favorite open world game, which is pretty major because I play a lot of those. And this is also FromSoft's first open world game, which is quite an accomplishment, I guess. It's a great game with a lot of improvements over the previous games. However, it did have some issues here and there with technical issues, so that brought it down a little bit, but not a significant amount. It's also worth noting some incantations and playstyles are pretty weak, such as the one I did my first playthrough, but it's really hard to balance a game like this because it's so large and you have so many different fighting styles, so many different abilities you can use, so it's hard to really make all those equally good. And that's about it. If you enjoyed this video at all, leave a like, sub for more, and comment suggestions. Thanks. If you have any questions or thoughts, let me know and I'll respond back. See ya.